Marta Trucker in the building. Yo, yo, yo. Get All right. Here. What's good? What's good? Mar the Trucker. M Little Mar. Mar. What's good, man? What is good? This trucking. You say you you say this trucking, man. Well, hey, listen. Let's let's this winning. Yo, let's let's take it let's take it back, man. You're a man of controversy. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're a man of controversy, man. And I, I I honestly appreciate you coming on and and chopping it up with me. Now, let me just start off by saying I I spotlighted you on the channel a few times. The very first time the TikTokers came after you when when they found out that you had an issue before yeah. you got into trucking and i got a hold of it i did my little bit of research on it and it was a lot of a lot of questions you you did made made a video to to come back all the stuff that happened to you so in the beginning you was hemmed up with with some other guy in a right. in a in a in a messing with a young female but i'll i'll let you go ahead and explain what happened from there what what led up to all of that every day for the last 10 years loretta there has been giving me a large black coffee today she gives me a large black coffee only it's got sugar in it. a lot of sugar i just came back to complain yeah i mean i'm i try not to like address it too much because, you know, I mean, the situation, I just try to, like, move from it. But, I mean, it, it's pretty, like, a simple situation that could happen to anybody. We met the girl on a dating app. She said she was 18. She looked way older than she actually was. Uh, we picked her up from her house, drove to Walmart. And, uh, I mean, that's basically it. But, I mean, we all walked inside Walmart together. And there was, like, two detectives. Because it was a small town. There were two detectives at the front looking for, like, shoplifters. And she just walked right up to him, and I, I I don't know why, I couldn't tell you why. I wish I knew why, but it was just a, it was almost like it was a setup. It was just a crazy situation. But I mean, I'm not on like any registry or anything like that because you know the prosecutors and the judge and everybody looked into the actual facts, and you know they figured out a plea deal that was reasonable for both for both for everybody. Now, Mark, my question at the time of reading the article and everything that happened that transpired. If you, if you, of course, didn't do anything wrong, why, why did you accept the deal? See, the problem is the way, the way the law is written, it doesn't matter if the girl lies about her age or whether you know or not. It's like, uh, you did it, you did it. There, there's no, there's no legal defense to it, basically. So either you, I mean, either you take the plea deal or you risk going to trial and, and getting 20 years. It's as simple as that. We basically had to tell you, even if they would have offered us five years, we would have had to take that as well. But, you know, they, they figured, you know, that wasn't necessary based on actual facts. Now, lucky for you, you got probation, right? Yeah, it was like a, it was a short sentence, but yeah, it was like basically probation. It was just a couple of months and then, and then probation. Now, how cool was you with the, with the other guy that was involved? I mean, yeah, that, that was my, uh, we were like best friends at the time. We had known each other for a couple of years. I mean, we used to do like, I mean, stuff like that all the time. So, I mean, and I even had like a, I mean, I don't, well, I don't like talk about that. Uh, if you know about like my adult adult page, you know, I don't know if you <laughs> knew all of that. But. Right, that page was kind of was kind of big back then, back in the day. You could just hop on that page and, and 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 have your have your choice. All right, man. Yeah. So where, so where did all that transpire? Is is that from your hometown? Like where where are you from, and where did that transpire? No, nah, see, I'm like, that's what I like, got a lot of people confused. Like they thought I was like moving back to Washington, like uh, to avoid something. But no, I'm I'm originally from Washington State. I was born in Washington. I lived in Washington for uh, till I was 15. But um, my my grandma, she had a lot of relatives in South Carolina. Cause that's where she was from. Uh, we just ended up in Washington because my mom was military. But uh, so so we moved back to South. So we moved to South Carolina, and I lived, I lived there for seven years. And then I just uh, just decided to move back last last December. All of that was going on before you got in the trucking. But before you got in the trucking, you 
you tried to you you tried your hand at hip hop. You made a you got a couple of got a couple of music videos on your platform and all like that. And of course, you went by the moniker of Little Mar back in the day. What? happened with that part of your journey, the hip-hop journey? I mean, the thing about it is I was mostly just doing music for fun, but honestly I, I, I always planned to, to um, do trucking, like regardless of whether music worked out or not. I mean, now, now, I mean, to be fair, if I was like a, actually I like blew up, like as a, you know, <laughs> like actually famous, famous, but but no, if it's like the way it is right now, like I always plan on doing trucking, because like when I was younger, like when I was like five years old, what I wanted to be when I grew up was an ice cream man, like driving around like, like the, the ice cream truck, you know. It's like, but that that was just like when I was younger, that was like unrealistic. But then when I grew up, I was like looked in the trunk and I realized that's what I actually wanted to do. Cause I just I just love driving to be honest. I couldn't wait till I turned fifteen to get my provisional license. Cause I started driving right when I was fifteen, right when I was able to get my provisional license. So I was. I couldn't wait. You said the ice cream, man. Would you, would you want to be like Master <laughs> P, bro? <laughs> man. Just call me the ice cream, man. I got, your, I got your ice cream right here. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. So moving moving on to your journey, you of course, you decided to come into trucking, and you decided to come into trucking by way of going to a school. The Not, not a trucking school, but one of the sponsored trucking sponsored trucking school I, if i'm not mistaken i think wasn't the first one prime yeah so so i so i got kicked out of prime uh, I, I know you more than likely know about that you saw the uh body cam footage yeah what well, so what happened with that well before you get into it what made you choose prime to to come to school in the first place honestly they they were actually the only ones that that took me because i i did have three Tickets from uh, 2018 and, and 2019, they were like early 2019, but it was still within three years, even though it was over two years old. And then on top of that, I, I had a total my Camaro in 2020, in August of 2020. So, I mean, none, none of that affects me now because I haven't had any accidents or tickets since, since then. So everything is more than uh, three to five years old. But uh, so, yeah, I, I check with every other like training company and nobody else will take me. So. And I got really lucky, like, after I got kicked out of Prime that I was able to still find another one that took me. Like, it was a little bit different. I had to pay a $500, like, a down payment just to even start. But it, it was actually a way better company. Like, they're, they're paid. They, like, they paid for your trainer's miles and your miles while you were in training. So, like, I was making, like, 1700 a week after I got my CDL when I was with my trainer. So, I, honestly, it worked out for the better because they're – they, they were way better than Prime. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely touch on that. Seventeen hundred as a trainee, man. That's 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 a lick for you right there, man. Because nowadays trainees is getting like seven hundred, four hundred, five hundred. You you lucked up yeah. and got a got up was seventeen hundred a week, and you was just a trainee. We'll we'll definitely touch back on that. So. You're you're at Prime. I guess this is almost close to you graduating. You decided to celebrate. Yeah, see, could can what, you... what 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 happened right there, bro? Well, we're not just gonna let you walk out of here. Who's we, sucker? Smith and Wesson and me. Yeah, because when my trainer, he had dropped me back off. I think my uh, or my uh, road test was scheduled for, like, three days later. Um, so he dropped me back off at the hotel. So I had three days to, you know, do whatever I wanted. So I went and got a rental car. Um, And I just got on this, the same dating app. I actually found two different girls. I, I linked up with them on, well, I think it was actually, it might have been the same day. I'm not even sure. But I, uh, I, I brought both of them to the hotel, actually, you know, on separate occasions. But I didn't get the reason I got caught the third time because the, the second girl I linked up with her twice. So um, the reason I got caught that time was because I went on Instagram Live and uh, you know I got a lot of like hate, obviously haters on Instagram too. So so they um, I, I don't know how the the weird the weird thing is I don't even know how the police knew where I was at. But they uh, they basically sent them my Instagram Live and they 
they told them what, that I was with a girl that was underage. So, so it technically wasn't a prime that kicked me out originally. As a lot of people thought in the video, like I did something wrong, and then they got me kicked out. But that 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 wasn't the case. It was the police that had to do their investigation. So they they went through prime security to find out what room I was in. Prime security. Springfield Police! Springfield Police, open the door now! Come open the door now! Open the door! Open the door! Where's your phone? It's in my pocket. In your pocket. We'll tell you what's going on in just a minute. What door would say? I haven't talked to him yet. He's trying to find him. Yeah, we need to find out where she's at. Okay. Address. Thank you, sir. And they, uh, and then that's when like they obviously security had to do a report on everything on that and everything. So that's when the next morning I got a call from safety, and they uh, let me know that they was gonna have to they have to send me home. And I, I asked them if I would at least, because I mean my road test was scheduled for that same day that I got that I had to leave. So I I asked them if I could still take the road test, but they they said no. I had to pack wow. up my stuff and head out. So yeah. But luckily, I still had the rental car because I, I drove the rental car all the way back to South Carolina because they wasn't going to pay for no transportation. Right. So when they, they send you home, they make it your responsibility to to get home and everything. All right, man. Well, man, that's so the so the one chick, you you basically linked up with her twice and that that pretty much went smooth. But you said the the second chick. Yeah. So. Of course, the second chick wasn't wasn't underage. She she was above no, um, they, above board, right? Yeah, n neither of them were because they had um because the cops basically like in that 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 whole situation they had me handcuffed on the bed. I had to sit there for like a whole hour, hour and a half because they had to. Well, it, she lived a whole hour away, so they had to. I don't know if they got a hold of the police department there and they had one of their officers drive to her house. Or if they actually drove the whole hour to her house or what, what? But I know I was handcuffed and I had to sit there and wait. I was detained that entire time while they went to her house uh, to make sure that she was uh, that she was uh, legal age. So she wasn't at the she wasn't at the hotel. She was already back at home. What you took her home or? Yeah, it, it was like a whole like two or uh, at least like two hour gap probably between everything because. Yeah, I had I had already drove her the whole hour home, and then I drove an hour back. So now you just chilling, feeling good after a clap session, and all of a sudden you get a knock on the door, and you like what? Yeah, man. So what? I, I mean, when I, they I came and knocked, when, when when they came and knocked on your door, what was the what was they whole reason for showing up? I mean, like. What was what did the cops say when they when they showed up to your door? I mean, it was just. So they really didn't tell me much, but I already tried to like, I already knew what the situation was about. So I tried to go ahead and like explain that to to them and give them as much information as I could, like her name or her address, so that they wouldn't have me handcuffed or even like, because you know they basically got probable cause almost at that point. I didn't want them to like 
put me in jail while while they do their investigation, you know, because they can do that for like 72 hours, I think. So I just gave them as much information as I could right right away before they even had to explain anything so that they could hurt and get it over with. The young lady, she she pretty much just stated the fact that she was above board and she was just there as a guest pretty much pretty much got you off the hook yeah okay okay did did, did you go back and take her out again for that like treat her to some steak nah nah see, it, it was already like late in the evening so like after, after i went to sleep and then woke up I, like that morning i think i I, th- I, th- I think they they called me pretty early in the morning saying that i had a leave so i, I kind of figured that already that's why i never took the car back so i mean right after i packed up my stuff and left the hotel I didn't even really want to leave Spring, like Springfield, Missouri, right away. I, I stayed there. I was like looking on my phone at other companies and like just filling out applications because I was like just hoping I could find a company nearby that I could go to. But I ended up just making the drive back to South Carolina, and then I ended up. I think it took me like another another week to uh, to get on board with the, the the other company I went through. All right. So now the company that you got on with. Did you kind of let them know what happened with Prime, or you kind of just left that under wraps? No, yeah, they they didn't know anything about it. See, like, but when I was uh, the instructor, I, I did tell him at some point because I wanted him to know that, like, I kind of already knew some of that stuff. Like, because it was like, um, it was like a little, it wasn't really a smaller company, but like, I think it had like eight hundred drivers, and it was just that that one. It was, it was a small class, like, because it was only three other three other students, so. I wanted him to know, like, that I already knew some stuff in case, like, I started, like, zoning out, you know what I mean? You was able to pass everything. You was able to get your license fully through Company B that that, that helped you through, right? Yeah. All right, so how long you stayed with Company B? I mean, $1,700, bro, I, I wouldn't have left. I mean, I would have I would have stayed my ass yeah, there I, and retired. Yeah, see, the, I mean, the pro, well, I mean, I wouldn't have been making that much solo. That, that was just why I was in training. Oh, okay. Okay, so yeah, you... I, I think they actually started at like fifty. I think it was like fifty four, or I mean, uh, no, like forty four cents an hour, whatever. Whatever they start the new people at, but they had like you know safety bonuses and all all that other stuff. So fuel bonus, all all type of other stuff. So it it, it all added up, even with the low uh cent per mile. But but no, the the only reason that I had to leave was because I took that plea deal. So I, like I said, I did do a couple months. So I, I didn't have no choice, but otherwise I would have like sticked around for the extra year because I actually ended up having to pay um like thirty four hundred dollars that I still owed them. It was gonna be half off if you stayed the the whole year. They took out like a hundred a week, and then it would have been like uh, eighteen hundred dollars. But because I didn't stay, I wasn't able to stay the whole year. I ended up having to pay that thirty three hundred dollars back. Otherwise, they're gonna um. They were about to send it to collections. What about what what about the money through Prime? Did did you have to pay anything back to them for for them terminating the contract or anything like that? Well, um, I, I was supposed to because Prime they they give you an eight hundred dollar they give you an eight hundred dollar uh what's it called a, advance. So so I had the card and I, I transferred the money from the card to my bank account and I actually used that like for the gas money to get back home. Smart man. But no, I, I never, I never uh, paid them back. They, they tried to uh, get it from me, but I just ignored them. And they don't know. Um, I don't think they sent it to collections because they haven't yet. Smart man. I, <laughs> I would have did the exact same thing. They put the money in the, in the, in the Com Data card. I definitely would have switched that over to my bank account real quick because they can, they can reverse that. That right? Yeah. Well, like right, like it, you mean like when they first uh. Well, when they like when, when they deposit, yeah, when they the 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 when they added it to your card and all like that, you were smart enough to say, hey, let me let me go in and put this in my bank account instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't think if you would have did that, they they definitely would have reversed it. They yeah, they they yeah. definitely would have did that. So so smart man, smart smart move on your part, man. All right, so. Of course, I came across you on TikTok. A lot of TikTok drivers had comments about you. They made stitches about you and and duets about you. And that's basically how I I came across you. As as you being the truck driver, I mean, you 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 call yourself the 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 world's greatest truck driver. I mean, not everybody agree. <laughs> 
But you, you call yourself the world's greatest truck driver. How did you handle the backlash when when the TikTok truckers found out about your first first incident? How how did you handle that? I mean, you mean like the arrest incident? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I try to just like I said, ignore it basically because I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I can't change it now, you know. Okay, okay. How about how how did you handle the backlash of 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 the prime incident? How did you handle that? Well, anything trucking really, I suppose. I just it, it's entertainment for me. Like they, their reactions and all that, it, it's just all been pure entertainment. That's why I continue to post. And you know, I mean, other people would have deactivated their account or just you know stop posting. But I, it's just all entertainment. It's free. It's free entertainment. Other the other video that I spotlighted you, you was you was in a pickle. We we need to talk about that, bro. You you turned off into a a a a ditch, and you and you. You stopped short of saying that your GPS got you there. So it was dark. What happened in in that situation? God damn, Jimmy. This is some serious gourmet shit. Me and Vincent would have been satisfied with some freeze-dried taster's choice, right? <laughs> and he brings this serious gourmet shit on us. What flavor is this? Knock it off, Chewy. What? Yeah, I mean, I I tried to like see. It. I mean, I, I wish I would have, cause I, I had my dash cam running, but I forgot to save the footage. If I if I had the footage, I think it would show a lot differently. Because like when I'm driving down that road, all it is is orange cones all down. The, like they were looking at the cones that were like alongside a ditch, but I was trying to show them all the cones that were like way down that street. It was nothing but cones, so there was no so like those cones didn't mean anything to me because. I'm I'm just looking for the entrance ramp, which was where I, it used to be where I turned off at. But what they did was they they closed that whole entrance ramp. So I I did make the right turn technically because it used to be the entrance ramp. But what it, where it, that's why my GPS was not updated with the new entrance ramp. And like when you merged on the highway, if you if I had made that left, which is where I ended up going after I got pulled out, like you could see the highway uh, behind me was closed because uh because they had the entrance ramp closed i don't know it was just all confusing but like at, at night and it was dark I could, there, there was no street lights either i couldn't see anything i could see that that was a road but it was just i didn't know that it was all gravel though now mar man it seems like but, a lot of your mishaps is at night like the the situation that you had coming into a what was that little what was that a, a rest area right there that was dark and 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 that oh, incident no, that, right there happened oh you you mean the video that was uh that i lied about oh you lied about that one okay talk to me bro because i think i i think i spotlighted that one too the where you came in the uh rest area and you ran over something yeah no i mean you, you noticed there was no truck in that video and plus it was at night, like, if, if if the wrecker had came and got the truck, they would have gave me a ride. I was just driving through, and I saw the damage, and I was like, because that, that was when I kept already going viral off the other stuff, so I just figured, you know what, I, I might as well troll them a little bit. So I just, and then, and then I, I furthered it, because I've never driven for Western Express. I don't know if you believe that, too, but I've never driven for Western Express. Or Super Ego. Okay. Yeah, okay. That, yeah, that, because that, that was video. another. Yeah, that was another uh, video that we spotlighted too. You, you, you went from Western Express to Super Ego. So you never, so you never driven for controversial company Super Ego. No, I mean I, I've even made a, vi a real video um, reviewing all five companies that I've been with. Have you had any thoughts of of driving for them? No, I, I mean if if, if like if, like if, if I just like for some reason had like a bunch of accidents or just like completely messed up my driving record and I had no other choice, then I probably would. But 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 no, I, not Western Express. And Super Ego, like I almost went to Super Ego, but I went to a different, uh, smaller lease company out of Chicago. I mean, it was basically the same structure as super ego so i mean i didn't really i just wanted to try it out lease and then i didn't like it so i left to go to Hirschbach, and then i just got out of lease completely after that well great clarification on that appreciate it appreciate it 
Uh, so again, let's make it absolutely clear: you you never drove, never drove for a controversial company, Super Eagle. You was just pretty much just trolling, catfishing, just to keep the vir the virability of your TikToks. Up. Yeah. All right, all right. So recently, we we came back together in another video. You was you was stopped in the middle of the street. What what happened with with that one? Middle of the street. It was at night. Cop pulled you over. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I, I had delivered, and uh, it, it was somewhere in Washington, uh, like right on the border of like, Oregon. And so I had to drive through uh, through Hermiston, which is like a smaller town. I mean, I feel like that's like my route, but I usually take um, what is it, I eighty two to get on the uh, I eighty four. So I've never had to drive through like the uh, city of Hermiston. That was like my first time going through the city so I, i'm just not wasn't familiar with that area i've been up like 11 hours because i was running off of, i mean 19 hours cause i was running off a split sleeper berth so i so i i was like real tired so I, but i just go i guess i didn't see a sign that said no that trucks weren't allowed through the city but my my gps tried to take me that way because I, I did see signs like they, there was a i forgot the actual route the road but i did see a sign and i followed the sign at first that stayed on the highway but for some reason, it took me through the city to to, to, to get on the uh, I-84. I, I didn't see why it would be a big deal, though, because it, it wasn't even, like, a difficult road. Like, there was no, uh, like, I, all, all the turns, they I, they were turns that a truck could make, you know what I mean? And he even said, like, if I was delivering there, it would have been a problem, but you just can't drive through. So what happened when the cop pulled you over? I mean, I, I pulled in, uh, see, that was on, like, one of those uh, city streets, but it was, like, four lanes, and then they got the median in the middle. But there was nowhere on the right to pull over, and I was already in the left lane because that's the lane that I turned into. I didn't turn all the way into the right lane when I made the left. So I just went ahead and pulled into the median, and he tried to bring up those two reasons too, like that I was supposed to pull. He wanted me to just stop in the right lane in the middle of the road instead of pulling over into the turning lane in the median. I didn't, I didn't understand that. But uh, And then the other reason was being in the left lane. But, I mean, it's not even – the speed limit is 45 on that road. It's not like a – not even a highway. People got to get in the left lane to turn into to make the left turn into a business. Okay. Okay. So what 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 was the outcome? You you didn't get no tickets or anything like that, did you? No. See, I, see, I think most city cops. Uh, see, mostly like the state troopers are um, DOT certified that to like actually do DOT inspections. So I, I he just gave me a verbal warning. Basically, he didn't do any type of warning or any uh, inspection or anything like that. So it's not something that'll like show up on my record or anything. So he just gave you a verbal warning, nothing written that says verbal warning. He just pretty much say, stop following your GPS. Yeah, he, he did. Cause I, I don't know if they have something in their system though, because he did say, uh, if I come back through that town again and get pulled over within the next six months, then I would get a ticket. Well, they waiting on you. I, I ain't going back there no more. <laughs> you say you ain't going back there no more. Yeah, I'm already going to go go in there. I got you. Now, this is for this, this is for the 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 company that you decided to go with because in a couple of videos leading up to that, you was you was driving driving back to Washington to Washington to go work for the company that you're working for now. Yeah, doing that drive back. That was kind of tumultuous for you, bro, especially in a Camaro. You got another video up showing that a cop came over to offer some assistance. What, what, what happened? You just got caught in the blizzard? I don't need you to tell me how fucking good my coffee is, okay? I'm the one who buys it. I know how good it is. When Bonnie goes shopping, she buys shit. I buy the gourmet expensive stuff because when I drink it, I want to taste it. But you know what's on my mind right now? It ain't the coffee in my kitchen. Yeah, and in the uh, in the Corvette. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't really that bad, that bad, but I just uh, see that. The, the, the thing is, like, you know, conditions change. It, it can be clear one mile, and then two miles down the road, it's just covered in snow. So I, that's why I just be like more cautious, like especially like. See, I'm familiar. Luckily, I'm familiar with that route. So like, I knew there was a rest area in like ten miles. But I just wasn't sure if I could even make it that ten miles, so I, that's why I just uh, pulled over and, and waited. And I was glad that it, like I felt better once the the trooper came up and let me know that it was more clear down there. But I mean, it's just like because I, I like 
And people think it's just like I, I was just nervous about driving in the snow, but I, I'm not really nervous about snow. I'm nervous about ice because that's what happened with that U-Haul when I drove drove to Washington. Everybody just started sliding on ice. And really, like, it doesn't matter how slow you go with ice. You can be going 10 miles an hour and you just, you know what I mean? Yeah, I I know the feeling about that. One one mile, it could be just clear as day, sunshine and rainbows, and then a mile down there, it could be thunderstorm and rain, and then a mile down there, you in a snowstorm. So yeah, I I know you can you can hit all four seasons in in ten miles of of road going through seventy and eighty, boy. And I tell you, I tell you. Yeah. All right, so you so you're back up in Washington, right? Yeah. All right, all right. So back up in Washington, doing doing what local? It's more like regional, just like all over the uh, western states. All right. So would you ever would would you ever leave Washington again? I mean, you you look like a man of travel. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been I've been trying like uh, I've been trying to like actually like move a little bit further south because it's just like real the weather. I, I'm just trying to get somewhere. I'm thinking like either Texas or or Vegas probably, because I don't want to go like all the way back to the East Coast, but I just want to move a little bit further south where it's more, more warmer. You know what I mean? So, because I that's what that's actually the, really the reason I bought the RV so that when I am ready to to like move, I can just uh, I don't have to find a place. I can just take the RV, find an RV park temporarily to stay in for a couple months until I'm able to find a place. Okay, Vegas is not a bad not a bad place my guy from cleveland moved to vegas like about 10 15 years ago and he's been happy out there ever since and vegas look like it's coming up nevada las vegas area of course with the football team and amazon popping up everywhere so yeah trucking is beginning to be a a viable thing in las vegas so that might just be the move for you the man the man thing like like with the home time, I just start trying to go somewhere that my company has a lot of loads going because, like, the way I have it set up now, I, I'm able to get home, like, every week, basically, every weekend. So right now, up in Washington, you you, you back living with your living with your moms or you living out the RV? No, my uh, my dad, because my dad, he has a six-bedroom house, and it's just him living there. Speaking of parents, man, the, the back up to the situation that happened to you how, how did your parents feel about feel about all of that what happened to you in the beginning i mean yeah they, they were supportive because they i mean they, they knew the, the real situation they, they knew they understood what happened and my, my dad he actually uh like when i did the, the, the guilty plea here and he actually flew all the way from uh from washington just just to be there he took time off work and everything just to be there when they when i had to get sent are you the only sibling or you you have siblings or are you the only son no i got i got a lot of siblings actually i got a well i only got two on my mom's side and on my dad's side i got five okay i'm the, I'm the youngest on both was your pops a truck driver no nah. <laughs> okay okay I, I had a couple of like cousins like my mom's cousins they were truck drivers but that's about it. So on your TikTok, of course, you you already mentioned and clarified the fact that this this is just entertainment. So you really don't care about the backlash or comments that be coming through on your TikToks and all like that. And again, I do appreciate you coming on and chopping it up with me, man, and and definitely clearing up my speculations of of things about you. You turned out to be a turned out to be an interesting guy man I, i'm enjoying the conversation bro yeah no problem yeah yeah it seems like and a lot of it is just just satire too just to like because i already know you know what they're gonna say i mean a lot of stuff even the video i posted today i already knew what they were gonna say because it was a video of me um the truck next to me was pulling out his spot at the truck stop but he couldn't get out but see the thing is the night before I actually got out three times to make sure I was as far back to the trailer behind me as I could go. And on top of that, there was a yellow line in front of me, and I was way behind that line. But I still got a bunch of comments that said, oh, you should have backed up further. Well, it's idiots like you that, that don't uh, back up all the way. You know what I mean? But I already knew they were going to comment that. 
All right. So, bro, where where did the issue become apparent between you and another TikToker? What where where did all that come from? Like, how did that manifest? Know. Why don't you make me a double espresso macchiato with extra foam? You got it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why don't you make it like your life depends on it? See, the thing is, like, because he was, like, really one of the first people to actually discover me. And, like, on his old account, he did have, like, a good uh, following, like, over 20,000 followers. So that's how he kind of built his brand. It was because, like, all his videos basically are just duets and stitches to my videos. The only other content I've seen him post besides that is just, like, uh, talking about gun laws and stuff like that. But other than that, I mean, he doesn't post any trucking content. You know, all, all my content, because that's why I don't even, like, duet or stitch, you know, people that respond to me or make videos respond to my videos. I just let them do that. But I just post, you know, what actually happens out here. You know what I mean? But it's like him. He, that's just the only content that he makes. It's just duets and stitches to, to my videos. Yeah. I blocked him a couple times, to be honest, multiple times, actually. I, I keep him blocked for like a month, and then I unblock him, and then he goes right back right back to it. <laughs> but again, again, it's, it's, it's TikTok. It, it, it's TikTok. I mean, because like I said, you... I, I I did some I, I did some reaction videos to you, you know what I'm saying, but that was like I said, it was just based on the information that was that was handed to me at the time. So again, I do appreciate you coming on and chopping it up with me and and opening up your your stories, man, and just letting me know what really went on and and how everything was. So. I definitely appreciate yeah, that. Like even with the uh, one thing I forgot to mention, like even with the the ditch, like that was when I was a lease operator, so I paid out of pocket the seven hundred fifty dollars for the um for the winch out, and there was no damage on the truck or the trailer, so it wasn't like an accident or anything on my record. It was just you know, it, it definitely could have been worse. That's for sure. It's like the truck had tipped over with it and like you know actually rolled over or anything like that, but it was just a. Uh, it was just a learning experience, honestly. All right. So what you got plans for the future, bro? Like, I mean, is there a rap career in the future? Or are you, you just going to try and build your build you a company? Or what, what's, 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 what's next for a little Mar? Or should I say I mean, Mar I, the Trucker? I honestly don't know, to be honest, because, I mean, I, I did get my hazmat and my tanker endorsement, so I've been thinking about, I, I did want to do tanker at first, but I know it's like so much to it, and like, like it's a lot to learn. And then like, there's so many ways you can make a mistake, and even the simplest mistake. Yes, yeah, so I I got my hazmat and my tanker endorsement, but I um I did want to do tanker at first at first, but I know it's like so much to it, like that is like the training even is gonna take so long, and then like there's so much to it, like it's there's so much you can make a mistake on, and even the simplest of mistakes with with tanker you'll get fired for and like even hazmat like see i don't have any issues at the company i'm at right now so i, I wouldn't want to go to a hazmat company where there's the hate safety department is just gonna be on me 24 7 you know like because i don't even get calls from safety here like it, the only time is like uh there was a couple times where they they saw me without a seat belt but they just let my dispatcher know and then the, my dispatcher like just reminds me to keep it all the time but you know it's some some company safety departments are just so much more strict. So I just I don't want to like leave and then so um so I, I, that's why I haven't switched and tried hazmat and tank or tanker yet because it's just too much more that comes with it. But um I mean I I've been thinking about because my dad he was actually gonna help me buy a truck with his credit. So I mean I was still tempted to do that at some point. I just kind of waiting one to like the fuel prices. I I mean, because I, cause I'm somewhere where the fuel is just way too expensive in Washington, so that's something I definitely wouldn't want to do moving, I mean, living there. But if I move further south, I might think about that later on. It's also just like a huge responsibility right now. I'm just mostly just trying to get my experience for now and just just, uh, just go with the flow until I, until I decide to do something else. How did you end up at the Cana uh, at the Canadian border? You mean the uh, the Mexico border? Or oh, the Mexican border? That's that's. How did you end up down there? Well, no, because I delivered to to Calisico, which is literally at the border. 
So, so when I there was like one street where it like because the place I delivered to that that was when I was at CFI and they got like a a, a drop yard there. So the place I delivered to it was like one street away from the the road that leads to the border, basically. How was you able to? How would you able to back out? Because I think you you went up to the fence and the fence was closed or something like that. Yeah, they they had a, like a little like curb in the median, not not like a curb, like a little you know one that you could go over. But they also had a turnaround, so I just had to back up to the turnaround and I was able to, to turn around. It, it wasn't too bad. It just I just knew it would be a funny video. That's why. I, see, most of that stuff, like most of the videos I posted too, weren't even recent because I had been driving like a year before I actually made my TikTok account. So I just went and uploaded all the videos that I had posted on like Snapchat and Instagram. You got you you got a you got a pretty good following on on both. Yeah, on Instagram I had like uh, fifty fifty thousand. All right. So how with Instagram following? I I got a, about a thousand that that follow me, right? And I was on Instagram way before this promotion boost and all like that how was you able to how, how was you able to generate a, a fifty thousand following on on instagram well someone explain to me why i'm the worst day of my life my coffee tastes like shit your coffee is normally made by kato who the hell is that oh, i mean just off of all the uh just all the all the like controversies and stuff that i was doing before trucking like because I, I mean i used to do like a lot of wild stuff like especially like with the i mean mo mostly like my the main thing people used to like follow me for was like my, my body count thing because i used to like post like every every time i would find a you know link up with a girl and stuff like that and it just it was just entertaining for them oh, okay okay so you had a what do you call it again a body count yeah like, like i would like document it every time like every time i linked up with a girl like i would just like post post it i mean i'm on x videos too okay okay body I got, count i got 20 i got i'm at like 27 million views now okay 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 so i guess before we get on up out of here man and again like i said i do appreciate you sitting down with me some of the videos it sounds like you had a female uh in some of those videos was was that like was was that like a, just just a writer or or was or was she like a team driver or something? No, yeah, yeah, just a just a passenger. One of your dates that you picked up along the way or no? No, I mean I've uh, I've been there a couple of times, but but no, not not uh, I don't bring them like along with me. All right, that's what's that's what's up, Little Mar, everybody, <laughs> better known as Mar the Trucker. The world's yeah. greatest truck driver. Where did that moniker come from? Oh, I just, I just knew I just knew it would trigger people. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy. Bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes. Look, Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.